morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Patrick Welch, President and COO of Big Ten Can. I want to welcome you all to our third webinar of 2013, Enabling BYOD, Secure Mobile Access to Email Attachments and Content. I'm pleased to be joined by two distinguished guests today, Dror Todras from Let Mobile. He's the CEO and founder, as well as Anthony Turco, VP of Products for Big Ten Can, who will be our main speaker today. For the agenda, Anthony will touch on some of the topics and, and challenges with secure email and content collaboration. He'll also walk you through some of the solutions on the market that can, can enable BYOD. And then lastly, he'll demonstrate our two solutions working together to provide a comprehensive secure email and content collaboration platform for mobile. Without further ado, why don't I turn it over to Anthony and he'll get started with the with the webinar. Take it away, Anthony. So here we go. So today we're going to talk about BYOD, secure email access, um, attachments, content, basically what we want to do every single day. Um, and, and how how do we do it? How do we, how does it get better, etc.? So when we when we look at that, whoops. Go back one slide. So it's an evolving market. Let's just cover that first and, and, and get it out of the way. But when we look at the market, we look at where we've been, what we've been trying to accomplish, and where we're going. So the traditionally to this point, the majority of mobility from a corporate perspective has been focused on security. Let's get the baseline security right. How we're going to put these mobile devices out there, and it's all been about that. Where we're trying to get to is companies saying, okay, we've done the security thing. We think we've got it right one way or another. And uh, we want to become measurably better. We actually want a measurable performance gain. We want to be able to do a, a proper return on investment study and say, all this money we spent on these, on these iPads and, and Samsung devices and everything else is, is worth it. We're, we're getting measurable gains. From the employee perspective, it's probably a little bit different. End users were focused on getting files. They just said, okay, great, if I can, if I can get into my, my email, I can get some files. If I can get into my Dropbox, I can get some files. But that was then, and we were trying to get to is saying, I really want to interact with this content. I've got a lot of content, and I need something to help me find the right content. I want to interact with it. I want to annotate it. I want to create it. I actually want to have this iPad be a productivity tool, not just an access portal. So really some pretty big priority differences between end users and the corporate IT department. From the end users, email, content, and user experience. There, there's a Symantec study not too long ago which actually highlighted that the two primary use cases for mobile content, email, and that, our mobile mobility, email, and content. From the IT side, it's been security, it's been audit, it's been data loss prevention, it's been understanding where the content relevancy lies. So are we producing content that our employees actually use to uh, increase the sales process, whatever it happens to be. But those have been the, the primary drivers. So where does that lead us? What's our, our current state of play? And look, the enterprises, we're deploying these things. The, the number of iPads in, in the enterprise and the number of, of general mobility devices is skyrocketing. I don't believe there's been a real plan for productivity. It's just been about the device, the hype, and then trying to find productivity. And anecdotally, from, from IDC and from a number, of, a number of other vendors, the productivity gains have actually come not from working smarter, but from simply extended access hours to email. So what's, what's the outcome been is that we've got limited employee engagement. The, the employee is just working longer. They're not happier about it. They're not... Um, they're not engaging more with the company, they're not uh, looking, to, it's not benefiting the company in any, any measurable way besides working longer. The risk related to security has actually increased. Even if we've tried to put uh, different controls in place, 
we've had a proliferation of content, uh, whether that's going into a public cloud, a bring your own cloud, uh, corporate data, it's just gone everywhere. And our support costs have gone up, not down. And they've gone up because when, when I'm out there and I've decided that uh, my bring my own IT has given me a new PDF reader that I like, I've got a question, I call tech support. And that just helps balloon the support cost that much more. So we're going to cover three core approaches uh, to trying to solve this problem today. And the first one is, you know, let the, uh, let the user become the integrator. How I, that, That's what most organizations seem to have done. We've used the standard email platform, whether that's uh, ActiveSync or, or, or PopMail or as a IMAP or something, but it's been the standard email platform. We have a number of tools that we do the app shuffle with, and we move between those tools and we move our data around. And we haven't, we haven't really gotten an understanding of our, of our content relevancy to either ourselves um, or, or the organization. We just simply have buckets of content. So what I want to do is a really quick demo on how that, uh, how that works, how that, that quote solution or that approach has, uh, has, has worked in real life. So I'll, I'll close that out and I'm just going to open my email and uh, I'll, pick, I'll pick an account here. So the first email I, I chose is something that has an inline PDF. So I'm, I'm hoping that's refreshed. And if I wanted to annotate this or do something, I can't because it's in line and the mail clients treated it that way. So really I'd have to forward that out and, and try to figure it out some other way. I look at this particular email, uh, somebody trying to sell me a Thermogard. It opens in the PDF reader and that's fantastic, but maybe I want to annotate it. I want to annotate these hydraulic lines. I really can't. Uh, I'm in the native reader, but there is an open in button and I can open in a number of choices, whatever I've got on my iPad. So if I happen to pick Adobe Reader here, the, the interesting thing, I can say that, great, it has an annotation tool that I know about, so I can, I can annotate this, uh, and I can save that. But now I need to figure out, okay, how do I get this out of here? There's a cloud button, maybe that's it. But really, okay, now I'm going to send my files to Adobe in this case. So that's probably not what I want. Or there's another open in. So I can go ahead and email this out of my corporate boundaries. And I've really not helped my security situation at all and also the file is now saved in Adobe. So that's just a really quick sample of what we're doing today at, at the very, uh, very macro, macro level. So let's go back in and let's look at, at the next part of the webinar here, which would be uh, the second approach, which is really talking about, pardon me, talking about proprietary email containers. There's, there's a number of on the market. And they do work from a security, a security perspective. They contain everything within a bubble. They're, they're costly. They're very, very complex to deploy and maintain and, and update and, and support various operating system versions. They have a limited feature set, basically anything that runs inside that container. And the apps running in the container tend to lag their corporate, or, or excuse me, their consumer equivalents. The user experience is, is hobbled, it, it's quite poor, because I'm stuck. I can't do what I want to do on my mobility device. And I'm still not getting an understanding of the relevancy of my content. I can't find it quicker. I can't inter interact or engage with it. I can't, it's not helping. Basically, it's providing security. So let's go, let's go do a demo of a container, right? Um, and if we look at one, I've, I've grabbed one off of uh, off the net, and we can go ahead and put a password in there. And okay, great. My user experience is is very different. Uh, it's not an iPad anymore. It's not what I'm familiar with. In this case, all the apps are HTML apps. So if I if I click LinkedIn, it's the HTML version of LinkedIn. But you know, I've got a native version I much prefer to use. And if I go into the email, I've got four emails I sent earlier. We're going to go do it again in a moment. But I just wanted to show. So if I look here at, uh, at this email, 
it has a PowerPoint attachment, so I'm going to open that. But the native renderer can't render that PowerPoint attachment. So now I'm stuck. In this, I'm completely stuck. If I look at uh, this one, it has an attachment, but the particular email renderer in this, in this tool doesn't even show it to me. Uh, and I can keep going. I, I've got various things, and, and some will work. Here's a document that will open the native renderer, et cetera. But once again, only if the app is inside the container and my user experience is, is quite different. So that's, uh, that's approach two, which has been reasonably popular. And now let's look at a new approach. So the new approach, we've got a native email client, which is quite rich, and everybody already knows how to use it, so there's no retraining. And we've got some content management tools that understand relevancy, understand content intelligence and social intelligence, and integrate the environment quite well. We don't have costs associated out there with, with a lot of these other apps. We can get some measurable improvements and measurable productivity gains. If we can do security in the native email client, we can get an increased security environment versus changing the user experience to try to get that. And we can positively interact and increase the user engagement scores. So, uh, so I've got a, a demo of that as well. Now from the content perspective, I've been actually using the content tool, which is, which is the Big Ten Can Hub, to do the entire presentation. Animated PowerPoints, um, the descriptions, any, any comments or subscribers, et cetera. But what I want to do now is I actually just want to go ahead and open my email and go to the, the demo account. Those are the four emails I sent earlier. And this is, the, this is secure email in my browser or inside my native email client. And what's great about this is on the left, I see that it says, uh, you know, please review this when you get a chance. And there's, uh, it says email is protected. So I can't actually see the email. In this case, the email is not even on my device. So we'll go ahead and grab an authentication session. That's not my active directory credential. Hey, and there we go. So we've got an email, we've got an attachment, and we've got, ooh, look at that, we've got an inline attachment. So that's changed things a bit. So let's look at this one for a moment. Got another attachment, a PDF, and we've got a BTC button for Big Tin Can. So I've got these different environments. I can just go ahead and press those buttons. What I'm going to do is, uh, is press the PDF button or press the BTC button, and it's going to go ahead Tell me it's loading. And if we've uh, done the demo correctly, it says file, file was successfully sent to Big Tin Can. So we'll let that, uh, let that percolate for a moment. Let's keep looking here. We've got a document and we've got a PowerPoint. So actually, this PowerPoint is a good one. So this is a thing. So I've written to myself here. I've been working on this PowerPoint. I think I've nailed it. It's an animated PDF. PowerPoint, excuse me, with, uh, with touch in it. So if I open that, let mobile opens it in a nice secure container for me, and what that secure container is going to do while it, uh, while it renders that for me, it takes a, it takes a moment because it downloads it in real time. I think that's actually a, a reasonably large one. It's probably not a clever one to open. There we go. But it's, uh, it's non-interactive. I can just basically see this, and the native renderer is going to let me basically slide through it. But I've seen what I want, so when I go ahead and go back in my email, I'm going to press that BTC button as well. And we're going to send that. Now, when we're doing this, we're not breaking the security boundary at all. We've got a secure mail environment, content not on our device, and this is taking the encrypted message from the mail gateway and sending it directly to the encrypted store over in the content management system. So, uh, so that's that, and we can go ahead. Uh, we we'll probably view a couple other ones. I was hoping an email would come in, but uh, probably not that quick. So let's go ahead and. Uh, hey, Anthony, while you're transitioning into the next email, if anyone has questions, please um, use the panel on the right, and we'll uh, I'll ask Anthony questions uh, that you propose, and we'll try to answer those as we go. So don't 
don't hesitate to uh, ask questions and use the panel uh, to the right of, uh, of the screen to, uh, to ask some of your questions and we'll get those answered as we go and at the end of the session as well. So uh, I'm, I'm back in the hub and uh, I'm going to hit the tab here. We've got a bunch of tabs, but uh, the one I've done is I had uh, it configured to send it to my personal folders. So here's the, uh, the attached to attachment, big things. This is the first PDF we sent. And I can open that, uh, that PDF I sent from, uh, from my email. I can look at that. It's a, it's a brochure. That's great. But some of the neat things I can do here, I can go ahead and annotate that up for whatever reason, accept it. But now I can actually share my annotations with other people. Or I might want to do something a little bit clever. And uh, oops, nobody else is online right now. It's not going to help for demo purposes. But I can actually do a real-time video chat about this content. I'm going to interact it. I'm going to become more productive because of it. So I've taken a very secure email environment with zero retraining for the user. I've put it into a wonderful place that I can be productive with it. By, uh, if I look at this, I actually want to look back at my email for a moment. I want to see if, uh, if I've gotten something. I have. Fantastic. So what, uh, what the Hub's done, when I sent this PowerPoint over before, the, the Hub looked at it and said, hey, you know, Anthony, you sent us a PowerPoint, but uh, PowerPoints don't show that well on normal iPads. So we're going to make it dynamic and we're going to convert it. So it's, it's gone off and done that. So when we come here, when I go look at this PowerPoint, which was sent from my email, I now have a dynamic PowerPoint. I can just go ahead and touch the word white. I can touch the story behind it. And I can find out some fantastic stuff. Oh, what's the winemaker's notes on the director's cut? It's a little bit early in Australia for wine, but uh, you can't, uh, can't help yourself sometimes. So there it is. That's, that's an interactive, touch-sensitive PowerPoint directly from my email where I can now interact with these various pieces of content. So. That's, uh, that's really how easy it is. We've got fantastic content management with, with a number of features. We've got very secure email running in a native email container right there um, and fully secure. So we've got this. One of, the, one of the interesting things, I'm looking at that email right now. If I were to force a logout, bang, we're going to go ahead and log out of that session. That email content is actually no longer on my device. It's that simple. I lose this device, nothing was there. Everything is secure, fully interactive and ready to go. So that's how we can combine BYOD or corporate email, high security, ease of use, and very effective content collaboration and intelligence. So those are my highlight points I'd really like to make today. I'd like to open it up for questions. Um, I can cover off any other particular things. Uh, and keep going from here. So, uh, so Pat? Yeah, so first question. So how does this differ from kind of an MDM model and, and, and what, what's happening in the MDM market? Well, from an MDM model, we think of, or at least I think of mobile device management as the last two words, which is device management. That's, uh, it's fantastic if I want to put profiles down, if I want to take features away from iPads or, or whatever I want to do. And uh, basically, I want Altiris or Landesk for my iPad. Um, great. That's not about content security and content intelligence. It's about device control. And the security I get from that is, is ancillary. It's a byproduct in most cases. So what we've done here, this device has no security controls on it really at all. So if I, um, whoops. If I go look at my profiles that I've got installed on this device right now, I've got three. So basically, I've got uh, an email configuration profile, which came from Let Mobile to configure my mail client for me automatically. And I've got an Appearian profile on here uh, for delivering my app. So I'm using mobile app management to, to deliver apps as I like, which is what I really want. And I've put the security where the security belongs on the data. So, so those are probably some of the biggest differences. If I look at the, the MDM market, 
I see, a, you know, everybody ran to uh, to do the ulterior command desk of mobile devices, and and now we're trying, or the market's trying to change to figure out, okay, how do we actually do productivity? Um, so yeah, I think that's that's an evolving phase. Hey, that's great, Anthony. And uh, second question, um, uh, one of the comments was you, you just made, you just said that it disappears after login, after log off. So is this the only uh, connected model, or is the database on the device encrypted? That was the kind of commenting question. So for for uh, for Let Mobile, the beauty of that solution is that it does both. It has an offline mode. Um, it has a full online mode, like the one I demonstrated. It actually has a full data loss prevention engine in it that's mobile specific. So based on the content of an email or the geolocation of a person at time of receipt um, or the, con the contents of an attachment, it can make the determination automatically whether the email is encrypted and stored or whether or not it, uh, it's online. And that, like I said, can all change dynamically based upon where you are. Yeah. So, in fact, I, I've done something really clever. And, uh, not clever. I like it. Um, <laughs> I've gone in here and uh, put this in here. So, I've embedded uh, a YouTube video, actually, of, of Let Mobile and Protective Security Markings. So, once again, using their DLP engine, specifically, I've got that same video in, in full offline here as well. So, I can run it wherever. And that's encrypted. But um, the the... They can use their DLP engine to, to make it extremely clever and do data masking, keyword masking, all the different aspects that a, that a user wants or corporate needs, not necessarily awesome. a user want. Awesome. Uh, so one of the questions that came out too was, is the body of the email uh, secure? And I think you kind of answered this, but you may want to just recap at a high level um, why that's secure. And, and how the security works on, on the actual body of the email. Absolutely. The body of the email is actually in the full online mode like I just used. The body of the email is only ever stored in video memory when it's being displayed. The minute I navigate away from it, it's actually purged. So um, there's different ways I can protect that as well. We can do um, some level of, of content copy protection on top of that. Uh, a few other aspects as well. So no, the, the content or the body of the email is only ever there when it's being displayed. Another question that uh, came up was, who, who is the product intended for? So what we're showing today, everyone on the call, is we're showing two different products and how they work together really well. So Let Mobile for email security and also Big Thing Can for content management and security. Um, so the question was, uh, who is the product intended for? Um, then, um, and that was relative to the MDM question, because some of the MDM do some email client security and browser security and things like that. So I think the, when I when I look at who's it intended for, it's intended for both IT and cons and the end user. Um, from an end user perspective, I get genuine productivity gains. From the IT perspective, I get security, I get measurability and reporting. So some of the things I didn't highlight here were there's uh, there's this right here, this number 20, which is a content intelligence score. The system's automatically watching how popular this file is based on how many times it's been used, uh, how long it's been in the foreground, how many times I comment and shares, and all kinds of different attributes. The, uh, the ratings are, are normal star ratings, so they don't necessarily align. The user has a number of, of very capable search features to search for content they want. And if I come to my home screen, it's not going to recommend anything because I've touched everything. Um, but it can recommend stories, files, and other people in my organization to me who are related to me in, in their usage patterns of content. Um, so it's, it's very much about user productivity. But as you can imagine, to get all of that data and get those statistics, we can do some fantastic things for the organization. Like tell them they're, they're spending a lot of money producing specific content that's never being used. Or tell them, uh, in the case of, of one of the customers, that the, uh, their future sales projections are a little bit off 
because the actual number of views of those specific brochures just really don't add up. Um, so there's different things there. So it's really for both sides. When we look at the email portion, it's, it's opening up email. It's reducing the cost. It's making email accessible. It's giving you data security at the protocol layer, actually at the active sync protocol layer, um, versus trying to control the email after it's hit the device. Uh, and it's, it's very, very clever in the way it's, way it's splitting active sync into content channels and control channels. Okay, so uh, next question, I, and I think this is really relative to Let Mobile um, more than uh, more than with the Big Thing Can Hub. Uh, the question is, how is the product delivered? Hosted SaaS, and then uh, price point. And I know who this is coming from, so it's I think it's really relative to the uh, Let Mobile piece. Okay, so um, I won't talk to price point. That's that's Drawer's answer. Um, but as far as how is it delivered? It's delivered much like, like Big Ten can. You can get it directly out of a SaaS and be up and running in, in uh, five or ten minutes, or you can do an on-premise server as well, um, and that can be a single server or a cluster. So it's delivered in both fashions. Um, it's a gateway, uh, so your, your mobile devices connect to the gateway, and uh, they never connect directly to your AccuSync gateway anymore, which takes a lot of load and saves a lot of cost. Load. So. Okay, great. Awesome. Uh, are you securing Are you securing the body of the email or just the attachments? So you kind of both. Get a portion of that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely both. Excellent. Uh, next question is: Big Ten Can app capable of running in a disconnected mode, and is the content held by the BTC encrypted? Uh, I'll just add container, but that wasn't in there. But. So. Uh, the, the Big Ten Can app works both online and offline. Uh, because I'm using AirPlay, I can't actually turn my Wi-Fi off on my iPad. Otherwise, I'd show you because it uh, wouldn't show up in the webinar anymore. Um, so, uh, whilst well, to be a great demo for me, probably not so good for the webinar. But the the content is available online and offline. And from a security perspective, we're using Apple's crypto on the back end of uh, of the iPad device. On Android, we've encrypted. We've got an encrypted bubble. Uh, we also have a FIPS encryption layer we can put on it. Um, the server side, in one on-prem or off-prem, it, it can be both encrypted or encrypted and obfuscated. So, um, so yeah, there's, there's some higher level of security there as well. Additionally, something I didn't put in the demo because I didn't know how far we were going to go is we can do what's called password protected stories. And those stories actually, until you put the password in, which is your password. The uh, content won't even be staged on the device, and the minute you navigate away, the content will be wiped from the device. Um, you can also do geolocation protections on stories. So stories will only appear or disappear on the device based upon you being within a specific geofence or any number of geofences. So there's there's a lot of security around the content um, once it arrives in uh, in Big Ten Can Hub as well. Okay, uh, next question. Let's see. So uh, we use Traveler and AirWatch. Um, how would Let Mobile be a better solution for the end user and IT? Great question. So when I look at Lotus Traveler, Lotus Traveler is actually an ActiveSync gateway itself. Um, and you end up having to put the, the Traveler client on the mobile device, which has got a number of uh, added differences for the, for the user. So what you can actually do is put the Let Mobile gateway in front of the Traveler server, which will let Lotus become an ActiveSync server, and use the native email clients on the devices. And you can do all the DLP protections, all the content protections, and everything else on the device with the native client. And, and that's great. It means I don't have to support the Lotus client on the device. Um, I get all the protections that I would get via the ActiveSync channel uh, with, with Let Mobile in, in the fray. In the, in the fray. If you wanted to keep your, I, I assume when you said AirWatch, you actually have a, an AirWatch tag as well. And if you do have the AirWatch secure email gateway, that's um, that's a great product. It, it's an uh, active sync proxy, if you will. It's an on or off. It, it's not splitting channels. So you can actually stack the active sync proxy that's sitting in the seg with the mobile gateway, or you can get rid of the seg really on your priorities. Yeah, and I think it's probably important to note too, Anthony, that I think both uh, both our platform, Big Ten Can Hub, and Let Mobile, 
work really well regardless of the uh, policy that you adopt. If you have a, both a BYOD and a uh, corporate issued device policy, um, we, can, we can help satisfy both policies. I think many of the tools really work well in one or the other uh, mode. They do, and, and I think the, um, when you look at that, so we're using mobile application management versus mobile device management to deploy our apps. But when we look at the MBM platforms, every single one almost now has some level of app deployment and some level of app management in it. So I don't think we preclude one or the other. I think that we work very well in, in both situations. Yep, awesome. And then the last question, and it's again back to the MDM question, you know, why, get, why would I purchase one of these products um, versus uh, the same functionality in MDM? And I think there's a, a little bit of um, confusion relative to the functionality that's actually in MDM. Uh, that can, doesn't doesn't really overlap with what what uh, what our two two solutions do. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree wholeheartedly there. Um, any other questions? Uh, anything else, Anthony, that you wanted to cover that we didn't touch on that might be helpful for the audience? Well, I mean, from uh, from the let mobile perspective, there's. It does what it says on the tin, which is absolutely brilliant. You know, you're talking about all the different layers of security that you can want with the with the DLP that is mobile uh, specific. The portal is completely self-service if you want it to be, which means the portals are extremely easy to use, self-enrollment of devices, um, and both of these products, from a pricing perspective, are, are per user, not per device. Um, at least I believe that's the case. So that um, that makes a big difference as well when you when you start comparing it up to those MDM type uh, type approaches. But I guess when we look at the uh, the hub, and I, I hear that we've got similar, you know, the M, the uh, same features from MDM, then then I really think that we need to run through some of the capabilities that we talk about. We're not just about file. We're about content. Um, when I go back, when I go back to my mobility personal channel, sorry, I didn't send the word document. Darn. Um, you, you're talking about real-time editing, real round-trip publishing to the entire organization. You're talking about surfacing the relevant content to an employee. Now, this is a very, very small demo system, but we've got customers with, with you know, tens of thousands of pieces of content. And we start looking at that, trying to find what you want becomes very, very tricky. And a system like this presents that content. It makes it very easy to find uh, and utilize. So I think there's some dramatic differences that, uh, that we can cover there. Yeah, I, I agree, Anthony. I think we complement MDM really well. And uh, it's not, a, not just about file delivery or file security. It's really about how do you engage and become productive with the devices. And, and customers are really starting to see that as the as the movement um, uh, has changed from just securing devices down to how do I make the person and the human uh, behind the device uh, productive? And that's what we really uh, that's where we've really taken the market. So, absolutely. Any other questions? Let's see if we have any other questions. If not, we'll we'll wrap it up. So I don't see any other questions, but I want to thank everyone and. Thanks for bearing with us. Anthony did a great job, and uh, we're real excited about uh, this partnership. And um, we will continue our series of webinars this year. And if, um, if, either, uh, if anyone would like to try out either product, um, you can try out uh, Let Mobile at uh, www.letmobile.com. Um, you can also try out uh, Big Tin Can Hub by coming to our website and uh, going to the register page and register for a trial, and we'd be happy to help you uh, understand how we might be able to help your organization realize the benefits of these amazing devices as you, uh, as you start to embark on, a, on uh, the next generation mobile strategy. So thank you, everyone, and uh, uh, until next time.